If you're ready to harness the power of your communications data, blast off with Nihilus today. Hello, Rem. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, Blog. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you. You? Doing good. Just uh, we have a lot of fog here, uh, so it's very interesting. It's a foggy Friday for us. Oh, yeah, that's right. We have a lot of fog here. Well, that was pretty unusual. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm excited to jump in and talk about today's topic. Uh, so we're going to look at reoccurring events. So reoccurring calendar events and how we can create them using code and as well as using Nihilus. Awesome. Uh, so we're going to talk a lot about something called an R rule. So I'll jump into that in a bit. But maybe just for context, let me just share my screen just so we can kind of um, focus in on what a reoccurring event is and, and what does it look like just from Google, Google Calendar's point of view. Okay, cool. Um, so let me share my screen. There we go. I'm just going to bring this over here. Okay, cool. Yeah, so for now, we're just in Google Calendar. And if you go over to the far left and click on Create, and we're going to create an event. And there's this one area here. And you can see with creating an event, there are a lot of things you need to do in terms of inputs. But there's this one rabbit hole that I, I enjoy going to called creating a custom event. Um, so what you can do is you can actually customize the event and you can specify how often you want the event to be repeated. So for example, if you want to grab a coffee or if you want to do something on a certain day, uh, you get a lot of these general options. Mm -hmm. And when you click on customize, this is where you can get even more fancy and you can specify how often every week, what days you want it to occur on, for how long you can do it, uh, you can start it to end on a certain day or even after a certain number of occurrences. Mm. So, nice. so just thinking about this from a programmatical perspective, there's so many inputs that would be required to create a re reoccurring event. Yeah, totally. And uh, this is where the, the R rule comes in. It's a re recurring rule. And this is a standard for calendars or online calendars where you can specify a string that contains all these different options and you can pass that along when you're actually creating a calendar event. Oh, that's pretty useful. Yeah, so what we can do, and I, I've come across this recently, is there are libraries that allow you to start working with and creating this string. And I'll show you what it looks like in a second, but we're gonna take a look at a library that really allows you to go in and uh, start putting in dates and start putting in some properties in a more human readable form. And then you can actually convert it to an R rule that we'll look at in a, in a second. But this is the library that I'm going to, I'm going to use today. It's a, uh, it's R rule and it's in JavaScript. And as a quick example here, you can see that you can actually pass in properties like frequency, interval, um, what weekday, when you want to start the date start and for how long until Okay. And it'll create all the different uh, outputs in terms of which dates you want them to occur on. Oh, and from nice. there, what you can do is you can actually create the actual uh, string. And this is the string that I was talking about before that's kind of passed oh, yeah. between uh, different calendars to be able to kind of set reoccurring events. Oh, nice. So here is the R rule here. We have a frequency, which is weekly. We have an interval. So how, how many times and as well until uh, how long this event should occur and as well by, by which days they're going to occur, Monday and Friday. Oh, nice. So when I was looking at this, I'm like, oh, I, I need a visual. I, it's really hard for me to see this one string and to be able to to at least understand what's going on here. So the, the creator of this library actually created an online demo, which I think is really cool to visualize all the different options you can see. And this is what we looked at in Google Calendar. Um, and these are essentially all the different UI options that you would have walked through as a user, but you can actually do this programmatically. So here we have all the rules and we have outputs on the actual left-hand side. Uh, okay, yeah, it's gonna give you all the output. Kind of like the rule, all the, uh, okay, because you're repeating here on Tuesday for 10 times, so it's going to give you all the, the options. That's awesome. Yeah, so what I like to see is this is kind of like what you would pass into this library, and mm -hmm. then you can actually see what the output looks like. So you can just kind of confirm that this is what you're actually expecting. And then from there, you can actually take the R rule and start passing that into 
uh, a communication API or even Nihilus to pass that on to Google to create the actual calendar events for you. Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. So yeah, so this, this UI is kind of a good breakdown of all the different options you have. And I can walk through what we're going to look at here where we're doing an R rule, which is a recurring rule that occurs weekly. And it's going to start on uh, the first of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's going to start in January and it's going to start at 9.30 a.m. in the time zone, which is the time zone we're in right now. So this is America, New York, or even America, Toronto. And as well, for now, we're just going to do a count of 10. So that means we're going to have it occur 10 times. Mm -hmm. And we've set weekday. So the week start, it can start on a Monday. But the weekday that we want it to occur on is going to be Tuesday. Ah, uh, okay. That's interesting. So if we kind of, we'll run through the code as well. But if we if we call rule.all mm -hmm. on all of these inputs, we would get every Tuesday, 10 Tuesdays in the into the new year. Ah, uh, that's cool. So the rule starts on Monday, but the actual uh, event starts on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. So we can take a look at running this code locally. So I have this set up locally on my machine. We're essentially just going to create this R rule and start creating the strings to see what they look like. Mm -hmm. And this is something that you would do as a developer where you would kind of bring in this library. So I just, um, let me just remove some of this code. I brought in this library. Mm -hmm. And I'm using the R rule uh, to create a rule. And all I'm doing here is I'm creating a weekly rule. And what I'm doing is I'm passing the frequency, which we've seen in the UI. Uh, yeah. We've seen the frequency of week, weekly. And we're starting it by weekday, which is Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And we have the date start, which is going to be the, the beginning of the new year. And as well, we can pass in time. So this is going to be... Uh, the way uh, date works in JavaScript, you start from zero, you don't start from one. So that's one of the tricks. Uh, so this is actually the, the first first month. So this is January. Okay. <laughs> um, and this is going to be the third day. Uh, so it's zero, one, two. And then it's going to be 9.30. So we're going to pass in 9.30 in the morning. Okay. Here we're going to create 10 different events. And we're just going to create the, the rule. So you can do weekly rules. So we take the rule and do dot all, and it's going to create an array of all the different timestamps. So we can just inspect them before we actually convert them to a string. Mm -hmm. So let me go ahead and print that out. Cool. And what it's going to do is it's going to print out an array with all the different timestamps into the new year. So this is going to be every Tuesday, every week at 9.30 AM. For 10 weeks. Yeah, for 10 weeks. And then what we can do is we can take a look at what the R rule will look like. So all we do is we take the rule that we created using the library and we do dot two string. So by doing this, we can actually get what the R rule will look like. Yeah, I mean, doing that by hand might be kind of complicated. I mean, you need to remember everything, like all the commands. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's definitely challenging where you have to understand the, the 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 text you need to put in and then what each keyword means. Yeah, exactly. uh, where you can where you can use a library like our rule that's more human readable, mm -hmm. and you can also inspect all the timestamps that come through if you want to check to make sure it's working as expected. And let's do one more before we jump into actually creating an event using Nihilus. Mm -hmm. We can look at creating one monthly. And the one for monthly would be, uh, we create the frequency. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be the R rule monthly. So this is going to be an event that occurs every month. And here we're going to start. We're going to start it as well, the first of the year. This is going to be on the fourth fourth day or the fifth day of the year. And it's going to be at 530. Uh, okay, perfect. And this is going to be, well, it's until the end of the year. But as well, the count is going to override that because we're only expecting 10 events to come through. So let's try, try printing this out to see what shows up in the console. So we should see 10 events, one event occurring each month. Uh -huh. So here we see 10 events from the 1st of January all the way to October, and we see the timestamps that they're occurring at. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is if you notice, and I, I caught this recently, is that it accounts for daylight savings. So you see it goes from 5.30 to 6.30. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> after the time change. And I think yeah. we're about to have the time change this weekend. So this yeah. is going to be a fun time. Yeah. Um, and as well, we can print out the actual rule. So if I printed out the rule 
uh, which is the next console log, it's going to show you what the rule looks like. Mm -hmm. So what we can do is we can actually use this R rule when we're creating a reoccurring event. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at doing this using the Nihilus API. Cool. Yeah, so I'm just going to jump over to a code sample. Mm -hmm. And in this code sample, this code samples in Python. So you can do, you can communicate with the Nihilus API using any language. Um, we also have SDK. So we have Python, the Java, the Ruby, and as well, the JavaScript SDK. Mm -hmm. And I just want to show you the R rule and we can jump around in the code as well and take a look, but we're creating a event dot reoccurrence. Mm -hmm. And this is where we pass in the R rule. And this is where the frequency, which is monthly, the count, which is 10. And we have a week start, which is Monday. So this is going to take the current start time, the current end time, and it's going to create a reoccurring rule to be every month. And the start and the uh, end time is going to be today, and it's going to be at 11 a.m. So it's it's just earlier than when we started or just when we started this live stream. Yeah. <laughs> um, and as well, just to kind of highlight some things going on from the very top is we're just bringing in the Nihilus SDK. We're initiating the Nihilus SDK. And as well, I'm passing on a few more parameters that you need, uh, such as the calendar ID and as well the email, just so we can send the calendar invite to those specific emails. And then from there, we're just creating the actual event using the Nihilus SDK, passing in the start and end time. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to cut these out for now, just some console logs or print statements. And then we're going to create a reoccurring event that occurs every month. Um, uh, from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Cool. Yeah, so let's take a look at running that in the console. And it says reoccurring event is generally generated successfully. Desired events are present. I don't know what the initial error is. I think it may be a console log that I missed. Yeah, probably. Um, but let's take a look at the actual calendar. And what we should see is that we have multiple events created here. So the event that I created is from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. and it's for coffee. And this occurs ten, uh, ten times, starting uh, starting this month and every month afterwards. We'll see an event for coffee at that time. Perfect. Yeah, and this is possible using reoccurring events, and we have documentation for this as well mm -hmm. in the actual Nihilus docs. So if you go to developer.nihilus.com. You can take a look at reoccurring events and all the different formatting required for creating a reoccurring event. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's um, uh, that's that's all I had for the demo. I wanted to kind of walk through and show um, how to at least de demystify this R rule that I've seen so many times and how we can break it down and show it in different UI. And as well, use libraries, open source libraries to test it out. And then you can just jump into Nihilus and pass in the R rule for creating a specific event and then seeing that event show up in your calendar or in your user's calendars. No, that was great. I mean, it was uh, very awesome that you can actually visualize it yeah. and just import the string into your application and it's going to create it for you. That's pretty powerful. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's very similar where it's crazy. It's, you're, you're essentially kind of commuting and communicating in a different language. It's almost like regex where you need to pass a certain, certain yeah. string format along. <laughs> and it's good to kind of inspect and test it out before you're sending it along and as well creating it for multiple users. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, just another thing I want to highlight is our YouTube channel. Uh, we love to get more subs subscribers. Feel free to like our videos and comment. We love to hear from developers to see what you're building with, building with Nihilus or otherwise. So hop on to youtube.com slash C slash Nihilus uh, to check out any of, our, any of our previous videos. And as well, we have upcoming VV videos uh, coming twice a week. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to let us know if you want us to cover something. If there's something you would like us to do, just let us know. We're going to do our best to accommodate and, and try to make the most out of the, the live stream. So we're kind of here for you, for developers. So just let us know. Yep. Uh, feel free to jump in, comment. We love to hear more about what you're building and as well what, what you like to see on this channel. Mm -hmm. And don't forget also to visit nylas.com backslash blog, where all our blogs get published. 
uh, usually twice a week as well. And we cover like a lot of things, all our SDKs and more. Awesome. Uh, this was fun. Thanks, Blake. Yeah, thank you, Ram. It was pretty interesting. Cool. Right. Take care. Uh, See you. See you.